A tiny obstacle has delayed the historic launch of Starship, SpaceX's colossal rocket. The second test flight of the giant vehicle, which could one day take humans to Mars, was scheduled for Friday morning, November 17th. But a small rock in the path of Ship 25 and Booster 9 forced SpaceX to postpone the mission. Now we have to wait with bated breath for another chance to witness Starship's soaring flight. Rumors began swirling earlier Thursday as the equipment needed to to de-stack Starship from atop Booster 9 arrived back at the launch site and was then confirmed by Elon Musk on X that we need to replace a grid fin actuator, so launch is postponed to Saturday. Previously, SpaceX conducted a grid fin actuation test around 6.48 a.m. Central, so that must be when they caught the issue. The Super Heavy Booster has four of these grid fins, which work like small wings at the top of the vehicle. Grid fins are metal mesh squares that line the top of the Starship's super heavy rocket booster, and they're used to orient the booster as it heads in for a landing after flight. In the future, SpaceX wants to land the super heavy booster vertically back on its launch pad for rapid reuse. Electric actuators drive the grid fins, providing the power to pivot and turn them as they receive split-second inputs from the booster's guidance system. At the time of this report, the second grid fins were replaced and the third are out. The replacement appears to be all grid fins. Within a few hours of making the decision to replace the part near the top of the Super Heavy Booster stage, SpaceX's ground crew detached the bullet-shaped Starship vehicle itself, 15 stories tall, or thereabouts, from the top of the rocket below. This will also give SpaceX a little more time to complete any other last-second launch flow procedures to ensure everything flows smoothly before the planned launch attempt. However, if SpaceX is unable to launch on Saturday, they do have another opportunity on Sunday. But the weather starts coming into play on Sunday and Monday, and with Thanksgiving next week, that could also force a delay into the 27th or beyond. SpaceX is only allotted a few closures per year, and generally around major holidays, they are unable to close the launch site. To be fair, encountering a delay at this juncture is not surprising. Starship stands as a complex launch vehicle boasting a total of 39 methane burning engines, each generating approximately half a million pounds of thrust to propel both its booster and upper stages. A fully stacked Starship has also flown just once to date, on an April 20th test flight from Starbase that aimed to send the upper stage part way around Earth. It's worth noting that this marks only the second test flight for SpaceX's new colossal rocket, the full-scale and towering 400-foot-tall Starship, representing the largest launch vehicle ever constructed. In any case, Starship stacked for flight. This is another chance to put Starship in a true flight environment, maximizing how much we learn. Rapid iterative development is essential as we work to build a fully reusable launch system capable of carrying satellites, payloads, crew, and cargo to a variety of orbits and Earth, lunar, and Martian landing sites, SpaceX shared on X. SpaceX has said its approach to rocket development is geared toward speed. The company makes use of an engineering method called rapid spiral development. That essentially boils down to a desire to quickly build prototypes and willingly blow them up in the name of learning how to construct a better one faster than if the company solely relied on ground tests and simulations. After the first test flight's explosion, the company immediately sought to frame the mishap as a success, saying in a statement at the time, with a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and we learned a tremendous amount. Previous explosions Explosions have grounded a rocket for a year or more, but SpaceX quickly developed a new prototype, implemented thousands of upgrades, and was ready to fly another test vehicle in early September, according to updates shared by Musk on social media. Musk has said that the company has made enhancements to both the Starship spacecraft and the Super Heavy Booster design to incorporate lessons learned from the first launch. The launch pad, for example, was blown to bits after the inaugural launch because of the sheer force of the Super Heavy Booster's engines. Space 
SpaceX has since equipped the pad with a water deluge system that will spew water up as the engines ignite, dampening their blast and hopefully sparing the pad. Musk has likened the contraption to a colossal upside down showerhead. SpaceX is also changing the method Starship will use to break away from the super heavy booster mid-flight, opting to use the Starship's own engines to push away rather than a separate mechanical system. It's not clear whether all those changes will lead to success, however. I do do want to set expectations, well, not too high, Musk said at the October conference when asked about his goals for this upcoming test mission. He also posted in August on social media that he foresees about a 50% probability of reaching orbital velocity, though he cautiously added that even getting to stage separation would be a win, referring to the launch phase when the super heavy rocket detaches from the Starship spacecraft. Those are still better odds than what Musk gave the April test test flight, which he had said would have been a success if the rocket made it off the launch pad. Even though SpaceX already has many prototypes in line prepared for the next tests, the failure of Ship 25 and Booster 9 could still set the company back at this point. If the test mission fails, the consequences will have a ripple effect, potentially pushing back deadlines for SpaceX's and NASA's stated goals for the rocket system. SpaceX has painted Starship as the rocket that will fulfill the company's founding purpose, put humans on Mars for the first time and pave the way for a permanent Martian settlement. Musk has said that he thinks the first test flight to Mars could take place within the next three to four years, though he's known for offering overly optimistic timeframes. Perhaps closer on the horizon is the mission that NASA is hoping Starship will help fulfill. The space agency intends to land humans on the moon, returning U.S. astronauts there for the first time in five decades as part of its Artemis program, and Starship is slated to complete the final leg of the journey, taking the astronauts from their spacecraft in lunar orbit and ferrying them down to the moon's surface. SpaceX received a $2.89 billion contract from NASA in 2021 to get the job done, with another deal worth up to $1.15 billion awarded a year later. The company will receive payments as it completes certain milestones in Starship's development. NASA hopes the first moon landing using Starship will take place as soon as late 2025. With the difficulties that SpaceX has had, I think that's really concerning, said Jim Free, Associate Administrator of NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, in June. You can think about that launch date slipping probably into 26. In a recent interview, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said he was eager for SpaceX to resume flight testing. Before NASA allows its astronauts on board, SpaceX must demonstrate that Starship can fly safely. The company will also need many flight tests to master how to refuel the rocket in Earth orbit it before going to the moon, a very difficult challenge that's never been done before. However, will China beat the United States back to the moon? It's frighteningly possible. It is essential to us that SpaceX be able to test their rocket, Nelson said, adding that a major delay would be a very considerable concern to NASA. Part of that concern is driven by what he said was the space race of getting to the moon before China, and so, of course, we're counting on SpaceX. The U.S. Space Agency is aiming to put boots on the moon sooner rather than later as it's racing against China to create the first permanent lunar base. That being said, hopefully Starship will launch this week. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go on ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.